I'm back this week with chapter two of my sadhu painting saga. This is the chapter where I paint the drapery and the costume of the sadhu. Enjoy. I'm starting off this costume with this somewhat transparentish red scarf that he has around him. The reason why is for two reasons. First is this was directly touching his beard and the parts that I've already painted. But secondly, it's easier to prioritize and paint first the most vivid colors because they're the most obvious to mix. Whereas if I go for something that's a more subtle color without having the context around it, there's a bigger chance of me getting that color wrong. But with this bright red, it's almost impossible to get it wrong. One of the key aspects to getting the scarf right is to take care of the edges and all the grooves and shadows of the scarf. To do that, you simply have to keep in mind where the light is coming from, which in our case is from top left. So every time you're rendering some sort of groove or dip in the form of the scarf, you have to make sure that you have a soft edge on the left because it's closer to the sun and a harder edge on the right which is further away from the sun and is actually a cast shadow from the form that you're painting. I was uncomfortable with the red of the scarf lacking that cold context of the Ganges River behind it because when it's in isolation and it's on top of that warm underpainting, you're not seeing the true relationship of the colors you're gonna have in your final painting. So that's why I took the time here to fill in a little bit of that cold background just to let that red pop off of it so we can get a better idea of what the painting is going towards. I'm starting on the beads, which I knew were gonna be a long exercise in patience. Since I wanted to render each bead correctly and I wanted them to twist and turn with the form that the beads are sitting on top of so they wouldn't feel static and they'd feel like they're really on top of the clothing that's underneath them and reacting to its geometry. Since the scarf is of a soft material and it is rolling away from us gently instead of abruptly, I wanted to have the silhouetted edge of it against the sky be kind of soft. I feel that if I gave it a really sharp edge, it would make the material feel hard like metal or it would make it seem like it's turning away really abruptly. In general, I try to stay away from consistently hard edges on the silhouettes of people and things because I feel that a consistently hard edge makes the figure feel like a cutout. So I try to vary the edge quality all throughout the silhouette. I'm starting the somewhat tedious process of rendering these beads by delineating them from each other with the deepest darks, the grooves that are between each one of the beads, and then going on to render the cylindrical form and then finishing them off with some strong highlights. I want these beads to feel organic and natural. So the way I do that is by making sure that the beads are a little bit randomized. So some are painted to be offset a little bit too much to the right. Some are a little bit too much to the left. They have some slightly different rotations. And this is all in an effort to accomplish an organic natural feeling as opposed to something that looks stiff and mechanical. Here I'm tackling the complex problems of layering. Underneath the beads we have this peach tunic and then we have three different beads on top of it. So I'm trying to find the negative spaces of the tunic versus the beads before I go to render the beads in the wrong place by accident. Since the light is coming from the top left, you shouldn't paint that tunic the same value everywhere. You have to make sure that the top of it, where the beard is, receives the lightest values and it gets darker as it goes down towards the bottom of the painting. Same as before, I'm painting in the negative spaces of the peach tunic to find the borders of the beads. And I'm painting in the shadows that they're casting. I'm being mindful of the way the tunic is when I'm thinking of how to place the shadows on top of it. I want the shadows to go with the form and the rolls of the tunic, 
not just paint them beside the beads and be satisfied with that because the result won't be realistic as it won't be rolling on top of the tunic correctly. There are tiny little bits of light that are coming through the separations of the beads and into the shadow. And I've noticed that they have a really saturated red edge around it. So I painted the red first and now I'm painting those bits of light on top of the red. An interesting thing I noticed is that all the left sides of the cast shadows have in them this really warm red. I suspect it must be bounce light from the sun going inside the peach tunic and jumping out on the left sides of the shadows. Or maybe it's because the left sides of the shadows are being cast from the lit side of the beads, which has the sun bouncing off of the beads on that side. So the edge that's corresponding to it on the shadow is also warm. I'm just continuing the patient process of rendering out these beads and their corresponding cast shadows. It's taken a long time, but I have to make sure to take care of this because the face that I painted was taken up to a pretty high rendering level. So if these beads are too loosey goosey, it's not gonna look right as compared to the face and the standard that we established there. So while the face is the most important part and should be rendered to the highest detail, the beads are pretty close under it. They're not too far off. So if I render them in a very loosey goosey fashion, it's gonna be disjointed as compared to the face. So that's why I'm taking utmost care to render these guys out. My process for these is in general from dark to light. So I start with the deep dark separations between the beads. Then I paint the shadow side of the beads preceded by the light side of the beads and finally ending with the highlights. This four step process gets me to a finished result the fastest. I finally finished rendering the beads up top, but I still have half of them left on the bottom. So I'm starting that process now. Once again, I break it down into the four stages, beginning first with the deep dark separations, followed by the shadow side of the beads, then the lit side, and ending with the lightest highlights on top. In some cases, I'm catching some really warm bounce light that's jumping from the peach tunic and into the dark shadows of the darker set of beads. So I'm making sure to include that. I noticed that each bead has its own personality and slightly different color temperature. So I wanted to make sure that, especially in this dark set of beads, that there's one that's more yellow ochre, one that's colder, that they have a slightly different geometry from each other. Once again, to make sure that they feel handmade and organic and natural, as opposed to something that's very stiff and mechanical. The same is true of the lighter set of beads. Some are a little bit darker, some are more smooth and cylindrical, and others have more of a geometric shape to them. Once again, when I observed the little bits of light peeking through the separations of the beads and into the shadow, I'm noticing this warm edge around it that you see me painting in right now. I feel that without that warm edge, this wouldn't feel as natural as it does. One of the bigger challenges was rendering the silhouette of this cast shadow that's coming from the beads and falling on the tunic. I found it challenging because you can see each bead represented in the cast shadow, but the geometry of that shape is changing as the shadow moves further and further away from the beads. So you have to make sure that the drawing of your shadow 
corresponds with that trend or else the shadow won't feel natural. And finally, the beads are done, which is a relief because that was a bit of a tedious process. It is time to paint the rest of that red scarf and the cast shadow from the hand that's hitting it. So there's nothing particularly new here. I'm just covering the base with the darkest red and then painting it up to be lighter and increasing the form as I go along. One thing to keep in mind is when I paint the shadows on the scarf, I used a tough bristle brush that leaves some hairy marks in the shadow that makes the paint kind of thin and scratchy there. I find that lets the shadows breathe as opposed to them being filled in completely solid. Although it wasn't true of my original photo reference, I wanted to paint the tunic darker towards the bottom of the canvas to give this feeling of the light falling away from top to bottom. The same is actually the case with the red scarf. It wasn't this dark in the reference. I made them darker towards the bottom to establish the sense of light falling away and also to make sure that the figure doesn't end so abruptly at the edge of the canvas, but kind of falls gradually into it. The shadows inside the grooves of this tunic are actually extremely warm and contain a lot of orange. You have to make sure that you get that in. The reason why I think is that it's a semi-transparent material and there's a lot of sun hitting it. So these form shadows have sunlight bouncing through them and coming out very orange. I'm starting to paint the arm and it's the same story here as before. I'm starting with the darks and the shadows and then working my way up towards the lights. I find this method to be the fastest way of painting form particularly on really dark objects such as this one. I'm using my beat up bristle brush that has very irregular hairs throughout this process because it helps me add this organic kind of random texture that makes the cloth feel more real. And you can see me adding these little textures right now manually in places where I want to emphasize it. All this stuff is inside the shadow, so we want to be careful not to have a very big range of values. And we don't want our lights in the shadow to compete with the lights that are actually in the light. So be careful and keep your value range narrow and your edges soft. It looks like I'm painting in the background just to give a little bit of context to the clothing and the costume and to establish its silhouette. I'm adding this reflect light very carefully because I'm mindful of the value of it. If it's too light, as a lot of people when they put in reflect light in the shadow side, it often happens to be too light, then it will jump right out of the shadow and break the feeling for the light you have in your painting. So be mindful of the values, keep that value range narrow, and make sure to keep all the edges soft because there's no light in the shadow. So it's all dark on dark, which produces softer edges. And that's it for the costume painting episode. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you'll be notified when the next episode comes out. Next time, we're going to have a look at how I painted the hands. Thank you guys so much and see you next time. Cheers.